Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today what we're going to talk about, I'm assuming you've read the title. The last time I made a video about this, people got bent the fuck out of shape and just really went wild with it. So this is your last disclaimer. If this is going to offend you because I'm talking about facts, please just leave now or leave your hate comment and leave and yeah. Let's just get into it. So a while back I made a video about Melissa A. Fabello who used to work with uh, Everyday Feminism and I made this video about it. In that video I mentioned Virgie Tovar who was one of the people running that boot camp for self positivity, body positivity, I don't really remember, not important. Anyways, Miss Tovar wrote another article called Take the cake. Polite fat phobia is actually more damaging. So the article was pretty long-winded. I'm gonna link it below, but this video should pretty much summarize it and spare you the stroke that you will have reading this. Okay, so recently, Virgie Tovar was in the audience um, at a lecture being given by a fat person about how to create a work environment where there was no food moralizing. She explained that thinking of certain foods as good and others as bad led to a lot of unnecessary anxiety and fat negativity. I will say that as someone who had an eating disorder and is still recovering, I do think that that mentality, to some extent, is bad. It's not inherently bad. Because I do think that in some ways, me thinking that, hey, fast food isn't great for me, is what stops me from eating it every fucking day. Because if I were going out saying like, yeah, fast food is great for you, it's a great food to eat all the time, then what kind of self barrier would I put to not eat it? Does that make sense? So I do think that in a small extent, it's okay to moralize food. I just don't think it should be the end all be all and you shouldn't give yourself a headache about it. But let's be real, some foods are better for your body, more nutritional, more valuable than others. That's a reality that we have to live with. Trust, if we could eat pizza every day and it would be healthy, I would be totally down. But that's not how the real world works, very sadly. So then she goes on to say, and there, were, it, there was such a patronizing tone in this article, and I'm gonna quote her. A woman sitting in front of me raised her hand and I could tell something terrible was about to come out of her mouth. She began, I have a friend. She said friend with that familiar lilt in her voice, that little vocal dip that every derailing statement ever has had, the one famous made by mansplainers, who begin the statements with, actually, the one that tells me immediately that there is no friend, that this person to whom she was referring was only a false composite of bigoted beliefs. So that's great. Virgie Tovar, but at the same time, this is all your little neurosis. Like, we don't, this is all you assuming, this is all you coming up with your own narrative. Stop it. Get some help. You don't know whether this person exists, and it's possible that this person does not exist. But to state it as if it's fact, no. You don't know. Maybe this person very well has this friend. And just because the friend doesn't exist, let's say that she made up this friend, Hypothetical questions can still be useful. Just because you don't like them, it doesn't mean that they derail things. It just means that you don't like them. So this person then said, I have a friend who recently had both his legs, off, legs cut off due to diabetes, and he had someone sneak in soda and a cheeseburger into the hospital after the procedure. Don't we need to impose some limits on how we think of food and decide what, fo what food is good and bad? I agree with a lot of this question because like I said previously, I do think that we need to put a limit on how we think of foods and we can't just gloss over the fact that some foods are better for you and some foods just aren't beneficial for your body. Like that's a reality. So what this woman is saying I think is completely valid and I don't think it's a derailing question. On the contrary, I think that it directly applies to what the talk was about because the talk was about the workspace and how to view foods and not moralize them. This was a question completely on argument. So. Virgie Tovar, I think, was just pissed because she didn't like the question and it wasn't convenient to suit her agenda. But I digress. She spoke with righteousness that our fat phobic culture has given her. I found 
myself jettisoning into an imagined alternative universe where she asked me that question, I proceeded to ask her what her friend's name was, what age she was, how she knew him, what his hobbies were, what Netflix shows he watched when he was sick, whether he had consented to her speaking about his private life, and why in the world she would tell an entire room full of strangers in graphic detail about, about a friend's extraordinarily personal medical matters and glibly share his experience of a painful surgery. What kind of friend does that? The whole point of this country is if you want to eat garbage, balloon up to 600 pounds, and die of a heart attack at 43, you can. You are free to do so. To me, that's beautiful. So anyways, she goes on to like describe what polite fat phobes do, and that's not really all that interesting to be honest, and I'm pretty sure you could predict it. I will link the article. But let's just go into hypothetical situations since Virgie Tovar has gone into the abyss of hypothetical. So let's assume that this person who asked the question, who I don't know why I'm going to assume is a white person just because wouldn't that be convenient? Anyways, this person asks, hey, shouldn't we put a limit in terms of what we consider as good and bad in terms of food? Which also means that we can't be extreme in our moralizing, but there has to be a little bit of morality. There has to be something driving us to eat the good foods, right? Because I think most people wouldn't eat kale if they didn't know it was good for them, because who would do that to themselves, right? People eat it because of the benefit, not because of the delicious flavor or the disgusting texture. So this question was valid. Okay, so let's say that the friend and his situation with diabetes and the amputation were completely fictitious and she was just using this as an extreme example showing that in some cases you really do need to moralize food a bit and it could be helpful especially in that guy's situation even if it weren't true Obviously, I don't like when people make up examples and pretend they're real, but even if it weren't true, it is contributing to the discussion because it's showing these extreme examples and saying, okay, so what would we do in this situation, right? So I don't really like how uh, Virgie Tovar is going about this because the way in which she is patronizing and acting like she knows everything that she doesn't know, because let's be real, none of us know if the fictitious friend is fictitious in fact or if he's actually real. We don't know anything about that, but she's acting as if she already knows and positions herself as knowing compared to us who are just, I guess, ignorant and have no idea about anything. And when people write articles like this, shutting down the conversation, I don't really understand how they think that we're going to progress because if you want the progress, and although I don't agree with the agenda of this progress, but if you do want progress, you need to be able to have a conversation. If you just shut people down and say, oh yeah, this friend didn't exist, it was a stupid question, it was derailing, where are we going there? Because you're just ignoring someone and honestly, most of the time when people do that, it comes off as weak and it comes off as like, oh shit, someone brought up a point that you weren't prepared for. So, I don't know, this article just rubbed me the wrong way and to be completely honest, I don't really care about people being uh, overweight a few pounds like morbidly obese i'm not the person that's going to come up to you and be like hey like you know what would be healthy for you or whatever like no that's not the situation whatsoever but at the same time i do think that it's silly to gloss over facts that we do have about food and while i don't agree with people coming up to you and policing what you're eating like i'm the last person to do that especially as someone who's had an eating disorder i do know that that can have a profound effect on you but also, when I had my eating disorder and when I had my unhealthy habits, not for a second was I telling myself, oh yeah, this is really healthy, like eating all this food and then throwing that up, totally healthy. No. And it's similar with people, like the example, the potential example. If he existed and he had the, both of his legs amputated and then he asked for a soda and a cheeseburger, can we say that that's not a good idea? Can we say that that's the point when moralizing is necessary because you have to say, yo, this is bad for you because you're already sick, you're already suffering negative consequences, so stop. I don't think that that's anything of really reprehensible and anyone who's around him who's a friend, family, whatever, should be there to stop him rather than enable him. I don't know why that's so controversial these days and it's kind of mind-blowing to me that it's controversial to want to take care of someone and like want them to take care of themselves like this guy. 
I don't know guys, I, I'm so confused as to what all of these movements are trying to do because it seems like they're going in one direction and then they completely work against themselves. I don't, I don't understand. Anyways, please let me know what you feel about this. I know that the whole fat phobia thing is very touchy for a lot of people and understandably so between like eating disorders, mental illnesses and all the things that can affect like weight and all of that. I can understand that it's very sensitive as a topic, but we do need to be able to stick to facts and take out emotions at some points, I feel like, but you can let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always, and let's get into the fan art.